Welcome back, everyone. It's Game Changers Academy <laughs> October, presented by Verizon and AIM Labs. Uh, we had the first series. I am definitely thrown off by the giant orange thing on my screen. Um, <laughs> we're in the first, uh, first series was one of these two zero over overkill. Now I get into the second series of total of three today, and we have ourselves some brand new commentators. Cute noob, a familiar face. You were here yesterday, although a very unfamiliar thing going on um how are you doing <laughs> um i'm uh very spicy today because i'm a hot oh. cheeto um wait 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 hold on ah. i have something to make sure that you guys remember me by um there i have go. to be extra hot flaming hot cheeto okay <laughs> not just a regular cheeto and extra hot okay but gotcha yeah. mm -hmm. i'll make sure that's your full title um <laughs> thank you Yes, you're welcome. Uh, and also a, a new face coming at the last second as well. Much appreciated. Hello, Alias. How are you doing? Hi, I'm good. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm just happy to be here. Honestly, no, yeah. no, no Cheetos, unfortunately. We all can't be Cheetos. I'll, I'll send you some. Don't I mean, worry. Oh, that would I would I would really appreciate that. <laughs> Yeah, I think we can all eat Cheetos. That would actually yeah. be great. But we're uh, going to have to do that, unfortunately, you know, once we're done. Then maybe tomorrow we can get yeah. some. Because we do have Valorant for the next however many hours it's going to take. Again, two more best of threes now presented by these two lovely folks. And we are going to be getting into now Tactical Throwers versus Colossal Gaming. So mm. also familiar faces if you were watching yesterday. They both had very close best of ones in their group stage but here they arrive now in the bracket stage let's go ahead and take a look at that bracket as well see what the developments have happened i uh, already talked about kind of the expected result as far as version x um talked about the last casters talk with you guys now we kind of expect them to get to the finals cute noob mm -hmm. if not you know win the whole thing unfortunately for solaire who were so close last season they just they did the, the very harsh seating coming into october yeah, uh, I mean, version X, you, you stated it all, very strong team. And I could definitely see them going into the finals. A team that I expect to give them a run for their money is going to be Ariana Grande's Perfume, which if you are familiar, they uh, competed in the regular Game Changers and did absolutely phenomenal. So I am looking very deeply at them and expecting them to do very, very well as well. Mm -hmm. And obviously, I'm gonna have to throw in my bias opinion as well <laughs> team mystic venus is going to be giving uh version x a run for their money once they go face to face against them yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um our alias we do have uh I like that you brought out our crown of perfume who did win uh two months ago but they're eventually going to have an opponent actually the um start of the bracket it, it did start with revival and verify as well they're just playing one heck of a series so revival is currently up one zero against verify they had a very good game yesterday and then they also i think were top four of a previous tournament so uh if we do expect them to win versus verify you think that match versus our underground perfume is gonna be pretty good Oh, absolutely. I I love following Ariana Grande Perfume. Just, like, the story of them coming out of, like, winning Game Changers and making it into... Or winning Game Changers Academy and making it into the main back for Game Changers. And just getting to see them go on that run. It's just, like... it. I, I don't know how to describe it, but either way, it was just... It, it was something special, and I hope that we get a taste of that same air of I don't, excitement I, mysticism yeah. uh cool names like I mean, it's ariana grande <laughs> perfume yeah exactly <laughs> yeah yeah i think we're just excited to see all those familiar faces and uh well, again we're gonna have two familiar faces if you're watching yesterday so let's focus in a little bit on tactical throwers versus colossal gaming our second series of the day i believe we do have the maps for the teams ready to go as well so we can go ahead and take a look at that and dive a little bit deeper into the analysis for the teams yes indeed we got breeze haven and then ascent so all right cute noob starting off with breeze what do you think about that Oh, wow. I like Breeze. I like the fact that they decided, you know what, we're just going to spice things up because Halloween's just around the corner and we got to throw in a trick in there. And let's be honest, Breeze isn't the most liked among the community, but the fact that they started off with that, that is going to be a statement. If they can win a map that's so controversial, it's going to be the to the, uh, to the success of Colossal Gaming. Haven, I like. Also another treat 
another trick uh, because of how open, how complex you need to be. And I love that Ascent was the last one because let's be honest, everybody hates Ascent. I'm just kidding. They don't, but I do. Yep. So I'm just going to say everybody. I was going to say, you might be I, a little biased there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, you think these teams would actually disagree with you there. I think hmm. out of the five total maps that they played in the group stage, uh, Colossal played in group A, which was only three groups, so they only had the, the two sets. Three of the five maps were Ascent. Uh, both of Colossal Gaming's maps... Uh, against Ariana Grande Perfume and Team Verity were played on Ascent. Uh, meanwhile, Tactical Throwers played one of their sets on Ascent, but the other two on Haven, so I'm not surprised to see that be their uh, their map pick coming into the set. I think for the teams, it's rather familiar. Cute Noob's going to mm -hmm. have to hold that bias back uh, if we, in fact, do get yeah. there. Uh, but to hone in on threes, I, I do think there might be some some stats uh, coming into effect here, what they've been able to mm -hmm. discover from each other, Cute Noob. Because again, we have that situation where tactical throwers, um, they're old, they're boomers. No, of mm -hmm. course not. But they, they have been around. There's a lot of stats on them. Colossal yeah. Gaming, not so much. But for Colossal Gaming, they did maybe notice that Breeze was not a particularly good map for tactical throwers. So I don't know if we're going to be worried for them. We don't have to actually wonder for very long, as I believe I heard that the Agent Select is ready to go. So we can just go ahead and get into Breeze and see what's going to shake down between Tactical Throwers and Colossal Gaming. Go ahead, Casters. Let's go! All right, uh, Breeze, what are your expectations here? Uh, ultimately, on the side of Tactical Throwers, I expect to see Seder on the jet, as she's already locked it in. Uh, Kea on the chamber as well. Two agents that they did very, very well on throughout that uh, group stage. All in all, nothing uh, too complex. I am a little bit curious to see if the Yoru is actually going to be picked. Obviously, not especially likely, given that EB is the controller player. Uh, so I'm assuming we're going to be seeing them switch off to Viper. But I do like the pick of the Cypher in theory. I just want to see how Kayla actually implements it in practice, especially since we did get to see Kayla play a lot on the chamber on Ascent. Oof. I am a little bit worried towards the side of Colossal, like you stated. Instead of bringing out that chamber, the traditional uh, choice for this map, they decide to go for the Cypher, and um, I mean, maybe, maybe Bunny's like, you know, I'm just gonna Select troll and see if the leader here, but potentially switching over to that chamber, but if they, if Colossal Gaming does decide to go with the no chamber composition, uh, oh man, it's gonna be a world of trouble, especially seeing how impactful Kea loves to, uh, loves it uh, was in the previous Haven map that we saw yesterday, um, it's it's going to be scary. Not only that, but you also have Seder, like you stated, on the jet, which a jet with an operator in hand, it's going to be so scary. You're going to have two operators on possibly either side of the map. And if you turn any wrong corner, th there might be a, a bullet straight to your head. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be very important for Colossal Gaming to try and mitigate those uh, the potential double op setup on defense. But they are going to start on the defense themselves for uh, this first half, so tactical throwers won't get a chance to use that uh, that, that double op defensive setup quite yet. But I doubt that we're going to be seeing it on attack. Yeah, too early. Too too many tricks too soon. I agree. I totally do. Um, but is there anyone that you're gonna keep your eye on at least for Colossal Gaming and making sure that this defensive side to have goes a, a little their way? Uh. Specifically for me, it's all going to be on Kayla and Zoe. Um, I believe Zoe might actually uh, be a new player for this uh, Colossal lineup. I'm not sure if they played last uh, if VR, VRLR had uh, um, Spark playing for them. So I'm going to be interested to see like, how Zoe's able to stand up. Yeah, Zoe was really, really good. 
uh, the first map we saw them, but as the action goes onto the site, it's Eos the first to connect onto Kayla. You talked about that Cypher being an interesting look, but no longer shall we keep our eyes on them. Now the retake's gonna have to come through. There is that Viper wall that's gonna be potentially put up once the aggression gets onto the site. Most of these defenders are going to be coming down from mid. Zoe Z's Kayla is pinging to their teammate. Yo, throw some util, and yes, indeed. But the thing about Chamber is, you just as quickly as you get into position, you reap a Position and Ali Aura says, I have something to say about this lineup, this setup, and the defusal coming through. They're banging on the, the Viper lineups. It does get rid of one. Starry swings on through, and it's going to be Starry for Tactical Throwers getting that first point. Yeah, I think it's really crucial that uh, Kaya was able to um, get the Spike Diffuser before they were able to get it half. That allowed that uh, second lineup to come in and also forced Colossal to play a little bit ahead of that lineup. They needed to find a couple of picks in order to enable themselves to have enough time before the spike, defu or spike went off to actually get it diffused. And because of that, they had to play a little bit more aggressively than I think they might have liked to. Now, following round, it is going to be a buy up here for tactical throwers. You mentioned the forced aggression needing to come out from Colossal Gaming, but it was so quickly shut down. Trying to do this once more, it's going to be Juna Ford looking at one of the defenders who was trying to jiggle peek at mid, but things did not quite work out. So, no picks just quite yet. Still roaming around the map. Beautiful little scenery here on Breeze. Always makes me nice and relaxed. It's like, oh, I'm just walking through a nice little temple, but the action starts through the poisonous cloud. <laughs> I don't Indeed think that's very relaxing. <laughs> the first point of connect, yeah, chaos. Chaos now turned as so many defenders go down. It's down left to just two of Colossal Gaming, trying to be a little sneaky through the back line. Trademark says, uh, no tricks here for you today. It might be the seasons of spookiness, but you're not gonna get anything out of us. One enemy remaining. So you're just going to claim things up. Two very nice picks for her. Only three <laughs> off the blade storm. You should have it probably within the next couple of rounds if she keeps playing like she has been. But ultimately, just great job by tactical throwers making sure they had the entire site secured making sure that they could uh cut off any potential angles that colossal gaming was going through on that retake i do think they could have gotten the spike down a little bit sooner but obviously against the weaker weapons you always want to play it just that little bit safer so you don't run the risk of something weird happening Weird things indeed. Okay, Ali Aura says it is operator time. Casters, pay attention to me. First elimination is going to go down on the Viper for tactical throwers. So no longer those poisonous clouds, no longer those walls to help them get those nice and safe sight takes. And oh my. Let's take a look at that Soba just walking up Ha. Huh? No utility to really hold them back. It's going to be a Soba on Soba action here as Juna Ford creeps up onto Bunny. Bunny was ready though, folks. So don't you worry. Bunny's nice and safe for the following round. And woman advantage over to Colossal Gaming with that weapon buy up. Yeah, you can see them leaning over towards this B site, which right now does look to be the right play, but Kayla's going to get that early information. The KO knife actually getting it just a little bit before she can. And now Colossal Gaming should have an idea that tech throwers are headed over this way. Oh, it's so impactful that that KO knife was killed right off the bat. Also, Kayla didn't get pinged by it, so the utility is still intact. Eos pushing through, finds Kayla, but Kayla was able to get, eliminate Sator off the map. It's going to be a three on two. Bomb's going to get planted. Zoe says, oh, I don't want that to happen, but unfortunately, decides to go with one. It's going to be Eos trying to clutch this out, making this a 2v1. Operator is down, ladies and gentlemen. Viper versus KO, and it is KO who comes out on top. Yeah, just really well played by Aos. I just, I mean, it's not every day that you're going to get an ace clutch like that, but that's such an impactful round for her to just go off on. That's not only an ace clutch to get your team hyped up towards the start of this map, but that's your bonus round. That's a, not a round that you should hypothetically be winning. 
you just went in with the relatively weaker weapons and just essentially punched your opponent in the face. And now Colossal <laughs> Gaming going to be forced onto that eco while tactical throws are able to just keep building up this economy. No command, no utility available for anyone in the vicinity. Cypher is going to be pushed back to the back of sight, and the rest of Tactical just going to rush on through. They know this is the third time that Kayla has been forced to play this spot, and Seder says you get punished for playing the same area. Now the bomb has been planted, and the Viper's Wall is going to allow a little bit of cover once it's available. Not quite there, folks. It's Kayla finding the headshots. I feel like every single shot we've seen Kayla pop has been a headshot and indeed it is a treat to see Seder very low on health holding the corner along with Kayla as that backup support Eos getting brushed by the KO instead takes the swing and tactical throwers are just taking every fight at the perfect time yeah I, I love just the sheer organization that tactical throws is playing with and already we're going to be seeing a very early timeout coming out for Colossal I definitely think it is the right move, though. It, going down 4-0 is not exactly the best start to a half, and I do think that especially with the Cypher on defense is, is, instead of the Chamber, that's a lot that you're going to have to play around in terms of how do you make sure the setups are actually not being predictable? Uh, how do you make sure that Kayla is actually able to stay alive long enough for her utility to be useful? And especially on rounds like that last one, how do we play around not having that tour de force on eco rounds? They do have the blade storm for, uh... I'm sorry, I'm blanking right here. They do have the blade storm for Aliora, so that will offer them a little bit of an economic buffer in order to get that operator back up, but not having something like that tour de force is just going to make playing these eco rounds that much harder for Colossal. Do you think uh, that, okay, I uh, just looking at the map, I, I, I feel like this answer is going to be, uh, this question is going to be answered, which is the rotation of that Cypher. We see that Cypher hasn't been so successful over onto that B, but do you think shifting him over to that A is going to be the right call? It's it's a bit of an interesting dilemma, because Cypher definitely plays better on B, but he tends to get a little bit predictable, as we saw during those last few rounds. Kayla kind of was just forced to sit in the same site or the same spot on site. I do like that they're moving the operator over, and I do like that they're moving Cypher, but at some point I would like to see them go for uh, a technique that we see in some pro or like higher level matches where the Viper sets up on A, the Cypher sets up on B, and then they just switch sites. If the KO knife comes in, then you still have Util to defend the site. I like that. I like that. Indeed, we do see a lot of aggression coming out from Tactical Throwers. That knife flashpoint was thrown out very quickly and eliminated just as quickly so that Seder could play that back of B site. But this mid control is going to be instrumental. Can Evie hold off? Yes, one. The second Ooh. as well. Beautiful crosshair placement and gets away with their life to give that woman advantage over to Colossal Gaming. I believe this is going to be the second time they have this woman advantage last time we saw things went very very wrong but can they left. fix this now with having so much map control and so much vision especially with that drone picking out Seder through mid the rest of tactical throwers make their way onto a site where Eevee is still in there creating some type of chaos and with that bunny also adds to the mix and colossal finds that their first point yeah, and there you do see the advantage of having both Sentinels on that A site. Or, obviously Viper, not really a Sentinel, but mm -hmm. sort of playing that Sentinel controller hybrid that she's known for. But either way, by having both Viper and Cypher on that site, you're able to stack the players on the B site just a little bit more. You have Eliora oh, taking that spot. aggressive duel with the Operator down B main, should she get the opportunity to. And then you can have your KO and your Sova just watching over mid and it's another great job by Eevee to just sneak up into that uh position just outside of double doors that round where she's able to get two i do think it's a little bit risky to have the viper playing in that sort of position but ultimately it just works out for her as she makes an, uh, just an astounding individual play oh definitely much need around there 
for an economy sake of colossal gaming. Now, a little bit of sound over onto halls with the drone picking off for colossal. That's gonna be a little bit of information, but not as much as they need to know exactly where this bomb will be going this following round tactical throwers creating just so much sound in so many different areas which allows them to get this mid control kayla is at the perfect place at the perfect time the viper's pit in the back pocket of evie allows for this a main to be safe for the time being and as i say time being tactical throwers are able to eliminate the two remaining players onto the site and i mean one thing that I learned about tactical throwers previously was that they don't stop. And this we see it once again. Sater says, we have sight control, but we can get CT as well. Check this out. One Takes a couple shots remaining. onto Ali Aura, but the operator is still in hand. Oh, what a nice dash. Somehow these jets are not finding each other. And finally, it's going to be Sater proving to be the better jet, at least for this round. Yeah, the dogfight, not, <laughs> not the cleanest for either jet, but... Ultimately, Seder and Iaz able to fight through basically Iaz. Probably wouldn't have liked to flash herself as much as she ended up <laughs> doing, but Seder able to play off it really well. And I do really like the decision by Tactical Throwers there to fight up. You know that both of the Sentinels are playing on, or both of the Sentinels are dealt with. So there's not anything to stop you from pushing up even further. So you might as well take that space CT while you can and just limit your opponent's options even more as they try and retake. Oh my. The uh, KO knives out. Yeah. Ali and Sater, I think we're going to have to see a lot of fights between those two. They got to prove who is the better jet at this moment. Tactical throwers have found not the best result on mid and i like that colossal gaming is shutting them down knowing how much room they've gathered in the previous rounds yeah i like the decision to cut noise by tactical throwers here but colossal gaming just has so much control and here you can see bunny droning out to allow the jet and the ko to re-clear mid Zoe and Aliora are just going to be a presence there and they might actually be able to catch the rotate coming in from junifor Gina Ford, praying, hoping. It's so precarious. Oh, Colossal Gaming has learned from their previous rounds. They know they gotta be patient. They know they're not the ones to have to push this Viper's wall. Judas is gonna stand trying through. to catch their rotates. Oh. Unfortunate. Just able to gather one. Wanted to, but hey, you take what you can get here and Starry putting down the Viper's Pit to try and help them win this round. Recon Bolt, perfect time, perfect place, pings out Starry. Now has to play off of her ultimate. Doing a little bit of a ring around the Rosies. But it's gonna be so many bodies. Oh, able to get one. Snake Bite to hold them off, but not for long. And just like that, Tactical Throwers. They're able to be successful once again. Yeah. That entire round hinges on two things going just very slightly wrong for tactical throws there. First off, Junifor does eventually get cleared in mid. She's able to get one, but ultimately their lurk was just not able to even up the player count like I think they hoped it would. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, the yeah. spike does actually go down, and Junifor's Lurk does buy a lot of time. And as the Viper's Pit goes down, Kea goes ahead and tries and takes a tries to take a fight back towards CT. And I think if she wins it, that becomes much, much harder for Colossal Gaming to win. No, oh, Sater says, no vision for you last time. You were able to catch me. And my teammate, not this time around. Flashpoint still gives away the position of at least Seder for the time being. So a little bit more patience coming out from tactical throwers. I like the defaulting, but they got to find some type of success before they commit over to the site. So that's a flashpoint, and that is also a Soba drone eliminated. Poisonous Cloud popped. We're gonna get a KO knife from Yaz. 
over onto the site. Suppression has came through. Seder is able to gather so much space through mid, but Aliora, I don't know how you hit those shots when you're jumping up, but you just do if you are. Juno Ford keeping the dream alive, but unfortunately, the bomb carrier is on site here for the side of tactical throwers. They got a little bit thrown off there by that KO. There's two KOs in the game, all right? Chat. Sometimes my brain goes a little berserky. Flash over from Eos to try to eliminate Kayla, who's trying to resurrect. But instead, the Hunter's Fury comes out for Juna Ford, and it's down left to Bunny. A shock bolt in the back pocket. Pretty healthy. But this location might be given away by the drum. No, yes, it does. Very well played post plant by tactical throws. Not getting too thrown off by the uh, decision by Zoe to throw in the KO ult that round. And ultimately, just a very safely handled uh, spike plant situation played out by tactical throwers. I like the decision to use the Hunter's Fury just to prevent KO from going back up. Just keep the numbers in favor of your team and just rely on your post plant positioning to win you that round. This is going to be a fake dart, but it's not going to go very well as Colossal's actually pushing all the way out of A. That gamble stack. Not the right one, unfortunately. It's kind of like, you know, sometimes you make a choice and it's like, that that was not the right choice. And uh, thankfully for tactical throwers, though, they get to pant the bomb and nicely set their ways onto this post plant. Nice and even Juna Ford. Catching a couple of these rotations. Unfortunately, Eos being the only one that goes down. I always cry every time I'm the only one that dies. And my team's like, all good. It makes me sad. Yeah. He didn't still though. Eos, they, they popped the null command that round. They're already back to 4 out of 7. Obviously, I think you'd like to get the kill instead of the death right there. But you're going to get that null command again at some point with what three rounds left in the half still as long as you can get an orb or a kill then you should be guaranteed by to have it by round 12 at least so not the end of the world for you is there not quite there tactical throwers once again mixing things up they instead of having the cypher over onto the site they're gonna put cypher over onto mid position couple of trips over onto Hall and uh, this nest area. But so far, after the initial first two rounds, I was going to say, okay, nobody has gone Hall, but that's a lie. Starry there, taking their own path in life, creating so much room for tactical throwers over onto Hall. Here's if there's a tripwire. Probably just going to be very patient and wait till someone aggresses forward. And as I say that, it is going to be... The aggression here from Bunny. No, no. Reposition. Never mind. Oh, they could have crossed each other. Instead, they're at a standstill as the rest of the tactical throwers makes their way onto site. Evie says, hello, I'm still here. How's it going? Thank you for her to giving us the bomb. Starry creates that space, gets rid of the cypher, but needs to reposition with the squad here. He's going to try to do so by gaining some control of halls. But Evie's ready for shutdown, bringing down the band hammer. And it is indeed gathering the third point for Colossal Gaming. Yeah, I don't know how sustainable these plays from Eevee are going to be, though. This is the second round where her advancing into just a completely unexpected defensive position has done really well for Colossal. But again, it is the Viper. That's not a player that you normally... Or that's not an agent, rather. Eevee's done perfectly mm -hmm. fine. But that's not an agent that you necessarily want to be your first line of contact. Yeah. And ultimately, having your rounds more or less hinge on whether or not one player can creep up into a position and go uncleared is not something that I'm particularly fond of seeing. Well, are you fond of a Viper's Pit and then getting caught out right after? Or are you fond of Eos just creating havoc over onto halls with the help? of their jet evie still onto the site even after being caught uh, repositioned and was able to find one now still very deep into that viper's pit tactical thrower is in a very awkward position not sure whether it's to plant or not zoe is up in halls 
Seder shuts down. Eevee pops out of that Viper's Pit. And finally, it is down left to a 2v1. Aliora. Leave an operator in hand here. And a shorty as well. This calls for rotation over from Tactical Thrower. As they say, all right, there's an op somewhere around. And we probably don't want to mess with that. But it's going to be Juna Ford who finds Aliora lurking around mid. Tactical Throwers are going to take us to the Last half at the eight. Switch. Oh, actually, one more round. I'm getting ahead of myself. Right here. Yeah, but I, I don't think this ends at a, uh, at a score with an eight in it. Especially yeah. <laughs> not with the... <laughs> I mean, look at what you have stacked against Colossal. You've got full rifles. You've got the Tour de Force, just to make that even worse. But you have the Null Command and the Vipers hit on top of that. I do think that Tactical Throwers may be gambling a bit incorrectly here. I think they think that the Cypher's probably going to go you towards to A. Play, and they play. might just be trying to force this with the Null Command. Where they're going to actually find the, uh, a gamble stack coming out from Colossal four members off the site and one just off site. This is the first time to see a stack. Oh, what a beautiful recon bolt gives away the position of Bunny. Unfortunately, getting caught out through the wall. Kayla! Okay, somehow finds their own kill for themselves. Uh, some snake bites onto that Viper's Pit to pause. Give a little bit time now, a reset. Nobody took a Kit Kat, but they could have. Sorry as well, gonna swing through that Viper's Pit and unfortunately gets caught out, but the rest of Tactical Throwers are ready for this setup. I don't know that the spike is actually planted, so the defusal <laughs> is going it. to come through. And yeah, oh man. I didn't realize that was that the was, last person standing that too. Was a, uh... <laughs> That was a very bad jinx that. right there. <laughs> but yeah, Tactical Throwers ultimately runs into the Gamble Stack. It does pay off for Colossal, and the Cypher ult does actually find some value in forcing Staria to get just a little bit aggressive outside of the pit, which I'm not entirely sure she would have wanted to. Either way, though, Colossal Gaming did just a great job of swarming around that Viper's Pit, taking advantage of the, uh, the restricted lines of sight honestly helping out some of their weaker weapons and just allowing them to creep up into positions that they normally just wouldn't be able to. And they played that round very, very well, especially considering the disadvantages that they went into that round with. Well, we definitely jinxed it. Caster's Curse has been confirmed. Um, we're not going to say anything after this. What, right, Elias? We're not gonna, we're not gonna, we're gonna not, not gonna suggest anything, but just Seder says, uh, Ali, we're, we're two for two now. Don't you worry. Um, a jet for a jet now. The bomb needing to find a new place to go with so much map control already being taken here by Juna Ford. Gonna be met with a tripwire. So, I mean, a tripwire and possibly four of the members of Colossal. Oh, the patience. Oh, the turn from Bunny. Being able to find Juno Ford says, uh, you thought you were going to get a really great play, but don't you worry. I am here to back my teammates up. And with that, this A site looks like it's going to be it. But this poisonous cloud, as well as this venom snake bite, is going to cause for a little bit of a pause for the rotation for tactical throwers to come on through. The cam is in full display, does not stop. Starry, a right click, and Seder is there as well, helping out to make left. sure that the bomb has not yet gone into sight. Yeah, and ultimately, I do like Starry's decision to get a little bit aggressive playing in a position that we saw that Eevee play in a couple of times during that last half. And her being able to stall is so important there. Skaya finds the last two. Tactical throws take a very important pistol now. They're going to go up 9-4, to four, extending their lead even more, and also going to be able to have these stronger weapons. Oh, man. Okay, Allie. Allie's just going to bring out the marshal. How do you feel? Okay, never mind. All right, Allie. I see you. <laughs> I see you baiting all of us. Um instead of Sheriff in hand. But I have to ask, what do you think is going to be the most helpful in the long run? Since we're not going to be able to really rely on a chamber to help out getting those, uh, like, faked outs, at least for uh, Colossal Gaming, what do you think is going to be the most beneficial for Colossal Gaming? Uh, first off, don't lose the 1v1s in mid. 
that okay. <laughs> losing 1v1s is generally something that is not exactly the most helpful. But specifically, to build off that, I think Colossal Gaming have shown that they are at their best when they are able Enemy to play remaining. for traits, like we got to see My during the last mid. round of the half. That they were able to take advantage of just the space that they were given and attack in a swarm, as opposed to just these hero plays that we've seen work out occasionally. And ultimately, I think that tactical throw, or that Colossal Gaming just needs to look for ways to isolate individuals on tactical throwers. A timeout. So you can really get into depth for us here. Elias, where do we see, okay, oh, now no. Colossal Gaming is going to um, be able to buy, right? The, the, the weapons are going to be there. You have a, you have Jet who can take up a lot of space. You have Kale who can gather so much and not even just that, but you also have your Soba. So do you just full on rush a site? And if so, what site do you go for? Rushing a site is going to be a little bit easier for Colossal because you don't have that Cypher to worry about, but also going to be a little bit harder because you do have a Cypher instead of a Chamber, and that makes things a little bit harder. I do like the idea of rushing here. I think you probably lean towards that B site just to help further take advantage of bringing Cypher on instead of a Chamber, going for the more like enclosed sight lines that you can just throw a cage to help smoke off as opposed to relying more on the open uh, sight lines of A. I think we actually might be seeing that. And tactical throwers going to be headed the opposite direction, or at least initially the trademark going to be placed down just to help give a little bit more security and halls, but ultimately we are going to be seeing both the uh, pseudo-duelists on this B site rushing. You're going up against what looks like a fast rush coming out from the side of Colossal Gaming. So uh, Colossal Gaming definitely hearing us out, but unfortunately in their case, it's going to be the quick rotation. I, did I say unfortunately? No, Zoe. Zoe making sure that this is the it site for them. They had an idea, they had a vision, and they are definitely executing here. I mean, weapon disadvantage is definitely in the hands of tactical throwers. Zoe, though, is going to be the star, at least for this round, already gathering three of those uh, defenders. Aliora says, all right, can't let you get all of the fame here, Zo. Let me add on to this mix for my KBA as well. And now it's just down left to Starry. A specter in hand. Hope. A dream. Poison is cut as well, but I mean, do you really use utility when it's kind of a bust around there? Yeah, I mean, that's Chamber's whole philosophy. Why use utility when a bullet just that's does true. the trick there? <laughs> Yeah, I do, I do like that attempt by Colossal Gaming. I think Tactical Throwers being able to get that quick rotate in is a little bit scary. Uh, if they have that sort of map awareness um, in terms of tactical, in terms of like where Colossal is going to head towards, then that could be something to watch out for in the future. But I like the changes of pace that we've seen coming out from Colossal. They definitely seem like a team that is wanting to play a little bit more fast and scrappy, and these quicker sight takes are just benefiting them in the long run, in my opinion. Absolutely. So, and you said quick, fast, and to the point. That's exactly what they're going to be doing over onto this A site. The reposition of Kayla was so impactful, making sure that they're not getting getting, getting caught off by that little corner. Seder with the a little bit of a whifferoni from those snipes, but don't you worry. A Sheriff definitely does the trick for uh, Seder there. Evie also One finds that the sheriff is definitely working out in the hands of Seder, and everybody from the site just collapsed with how much space Seder was able to gather on that flank. Yeah. And that is one of the risks you run by running these quicker site takes. You don't have a lot of map control to work with. And the main issue with quicker site takes is if you do get turned away, then you have to go back and re-clear. But even if you don't get turned away on that initial hit, you still don't have a lot of map control, and tactical throwers were able to just rotate people quickly out of mid and on flank and out of halls, and just take advantage of Breeze being a big map. You've got a lot of different ways that you can pressure these sites, and they were able to just successfully pinch Colossal Gaming on the A site and limit the effectiveness of that post plant. A little bit of a change of pace. 
a new route here coming out for Colossal. They said, all right, a main hit wasn't the play. If we can get mid space, which they were able to gather so quickly, it was a little bit of a timing from Seder as well as that recon bot. No, not gathering enough uh, information. Kea though on site, not really willing to give it up, able to collect one. Now repositions to make sure they are nice and safe, along with the help of Seder who finally came across the map. Starry gets the higher ground and able to collect onto Kea. And now Aliora, Looking for every single headshot, able to collect two, but no, Juno Ford comes forth and gets elimination. That would have had to be the ace clutch coming out from Aliora right there in order to keep continuing that round. I do like that they decided to change up the positioning a little bit. I think that if you are going to take uh, a site quickly on this map, then you should try and look to exploit mid and to leave the potential of a player lurking there just to help out. Um, ultimately, tactical throwers just seem to be on a roll right now. Doesn't look like there's much that is uh, much that is going to get in their way yet right now. This is a very Man. cheeky angle from Seder right now. It is indeed match point. Aliora says, let's just W key this. Let's see what could go wrong. Maybe you find Akea onto the back side, finding every single headshot. Eevee through the smoke says, uh, I have x-ray vision. Didn't you know? Well, surprise, here is my spidey senses tingling. Unfortunately, now it's down to a 2v1. Eevee needing to find every 1v1. Viper's Pit, but the spike is not in their possession. Instead, pops that Viper's Pit as a form of elemental of surprise. Works once, but not twice. Eos is gathering that last elimination and manages to get the first map for Tactical Throwers. Yeah, very dominant performance there from Tactical Throwers taking map one breeze. Uh, and that's got to be kind of worrying. You know, we talked about the map choices uh, before we actually got in it. I noted that maybe they picked up that that breeze wasn't particularly good for Tactical Throwers uh, alias, yet Tactical Throwers just looked amazing on it. So was that a miscalculation or is Tactical Throwers just proven to be the better team? I think it really just shows the difference in ways that teams approach certain maps and how when those different ways have sort of opposing philosophies you can wind up with some maps that just end up being steamrolls for this like in this instance the difference between having a chamber and a cypher versus wanting to play slower and wanting to play faster with chamber if you want you can sort of just turn on a dime you have a very potent lurking player in that chamber who can also change paces and be a little bit more aggressive especially on that defensive side meanwhile if you're bringing in a cypher you're sort of locked into just either lurking playing just to disrupt people or having to just essentially just act as a, an extra player almost not too much util that's going to be useful in terms of pushing out especially on defense and I think the round that most uh, exemplified that shift for me was uh, was round nine when we saw a lot of players from Colossal uh, four in fact push out of a main on an eco. Meanwhile, Kayla on the cipher was just forced essentially off site. The util that she was able to bring on B just couldn't really stand up to the the power that tactical throwers brought and i felt like that just represented the map as a whole tactical throwers just played very well very disciplined didn't get too off guard didn't didn't get caught too off guard by the cypher and i think that's a large reason why they were able to take this map one yeah a cute noob do you think that's a comfort pick or was there a strategy that just wasn't you know, delivered upon, I guess, kind of going off what Alias is talking about. I think that it has to do a lot with stats, right? It's just kind of how we focused on the stats, right? That we, we were like, oh, this isn't the best map for uh, tactical throwers, but we, we really didn't know how much attention and how much practice they really had on it, just based on maybe they just 
don't decide that they want to play that map because they are not that comfortable, but they obviously do have strats. And I think it might have been an overlook on Colossal Gaming on that part to be like, oh, well, they seem to have really bad KDA on that or really bad stats on that. So let's just go for that. Uh, I mean, for the side of, of Colossal Gaming, I also didn't feel like they had too many strategies. It kind of, we uh, Alias, you talked about it a little bit, which was the Viper being that really aggressive player and being that initial first blood that was hunting the first bloods by being really aggressive and and it was just kind of like you're relying on one player to be the star and unfortunately that's not how valorant works you got to work together and for me colossal gaming didn't have a lot of strats on this map i see yeah yeah i mean you know we talked about how tactical throwers might not be particularly good in this map because they have more stats kind of mm -hmm. kind of proving that uh, to a degree mm -hmm. um but colossal gaming with the stat that they have also did not do particularly well on breeze they did cypher again uh in their previous match versus one millisecond x so i don't know maybe maybe kind of a good map to go ahead and get familiar with each other colossal gaming might be coming out with some better strats leading into the second map but it is worth noting that while haven might go better for Colossal Gaming, it is actually a Tactical Throwers map choice. So, dominant first map from top, top Tactical Throwers, Topical Throwers, that would be very <laughs> different. Uh, tactical Throwers, and uh, second map is their choice. So it's gonna be pretty difficult for Colossal Gaming to bring this back, but we're gonna be going into that map after the break to see if we can actually get that coveted game three, or if there'll be a shutout in favor of Tactical Throwers. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 